Hey guys, it's time for another Raxatol Rank 1 Clear. This time, by request, we are doing the No Chow Clear. We're also not going to use the new unit Olive, and we're not going to use Esther. Um, but of course, not using Chow means we kind of need to use Sylvie, so she's going to help out on this party. We're also going to use some strong DPS. Um, for that, we're going to use Chizuru and Wilk. Uh, we're going to use Kaito for support breaking as well as water support, which is going to be very important for this specific setup. Because as you may notice from looking at this party, you're like, where's the magic tank? Um, if we're not using Chow, uh, the rest of the magic tanks, let's be honest here, are pretty worthless. They're pretty much a dead slot. So like Maeve, I tried her, and she was a complete dead slot. I wasn't hitting the damage cap because I couldn't fit enough good units on the party with Maeve there. Um, you know, other units, same problem. So we're going to do a no magic tank clear, and thanks to Kaito, it's actually relatively simple to do. Uh, and then Runda's going to be here for mitigation and all that. So I guess there is, it is kind of a tank clear because we're using Runda, but um, yeah, I couldn't fit Runda plus a magic tank. And Maeve... Um, just wasn't pulling our weight. Anyway, so this is the clear we're going to use. All right, so to start off, we're going to have Sylvie. She's our provoker, by the way, although we're going to be covering physical with Runda. Uh, Sylvie is going to vines, petals, and we're going to do her big mitigation Magnus on turn one because we're not using, or we can't use Runda's SLB yet. Kresnik is going to arcane stimulant for the morale. We'll have Kaito do um, Deep Destabilizing, and we're going to do Torrential Force to start his uh, Modifier Boost. Wilk is using a, um, I think, a Fire Weapon in the base form. So he's going to uh, just triple hit the boss in the base form. That's going to seal the boss. Runda's going to do his LB, and Chizuru is going to do Strong Samurai, Staunch Samurai, and... Nope, nope, not that. Strong Samurai, Staunt Samurai, and Breezy Barrier. Alright, so turn one is going to be a little bit painful. We don't have our good mitigations and all that yet. Um, our good buffs and such. But it should be relatively fine. Um, so here's some single target magic. Here's some AoE water and earth damage. Uh, so most of the party, is actually the entire party, is in their non-DPS form. This is kind of why Olive couldn't come to this party, because... She doesn't have a non-DPS form to hide in for turns like turn one where you can just stack up resist gear and bulk gear. Um, you know, this is kind of why I kind of went on my little, you know, speech about why I don't like SLB units because this kind of strategy is off limits to an SLB unit because you just can't hide in a, in a non, non tank form or non DPS form if you're not using a tank. Anyway, back to the clear at hand. So now we're going to use Sylvie to triple. We're going to defense for the big buff. We're going to do compassionate and resolve for just more buffs. We're going to go to the base form with Kaito, but we're not going to use him yet. Wilk is just going to reload and seal the boss again. Runda will put up his better physical cover and then double Runda laser. Chizuru on this turn can just breezy and double Eastern. Kresnik is going to put up Arcane Antioxidant. That's going to give us a Resist All buff. Now, Sylvie's been doing better Resist All buffs, but we need that cast in every single turn for morale gain because there is more morale by buffing Resistance. And um, Kresnik will auto-cast that the rest of the fight. Now, as the last action on turn one, or turn two, we're going to use Kaito to do Tranquil Flow, Cascading Slash, and then Pure Liquid Infusion. This is going to imbue the party with water, but more importantly, it's going to give us two turns of water absorption. Now, the boss is going to do more than just water magic, but most of the magic is water damage, and we're going to absorb it. So here we go. It's a lot of physical damage this turn, but we're going to just cover all that, so we don't got to worry about Mirage or anything. All right, Runda's covering the, the physical. Totally fine. And now here comes some water attacks, one or two of them, not many. Um, and then some non-elemental magic. So that was a relatively safe turn anyway. Turn three is the really dangerous turn if you're not using a magic cover tank. But if you're absorbing water, it's totally safe. Because there's a ton of water damage on turn three, as well as imperils on turn three. But if we're absorbing it, 
Totally cool. That being said, we did imbue our party with water, which is a bad element. So, Sylvie is going to use her Magnus, which removes incorrect imbues. So we're going to Marion Blessing Lightning to put up the Lightning Amp, also to remove that water imbue, and put up the Cheerful Strike for more morale gain. And the water absorbed is still there, which is super cool. Um, we're gonna use Crestic to LB for more morale gain. We're gonna use Wilk, or I'm sorry, Runda to SLB after that to maintain that 75 mitigation. Um, this turn, because there is going to be a little bit of non-elemental magic, and not to mention next turn, a lot of non-elemental magic, we're going to use Chizuru on this turn to put up Breezy, Eastern Winds, and then Focus Spirit for two turns of 85% magic mitigation. That's going to help next turn. Whatever we need at this turn, we're still absorbing water. Um, back to the shift form with Kaito, and we're going to do Deep twice, and then destabilizing. And then Wilk, once again, can just hit the boss in the base form. Okay, so we're absorbing damage here, so totally fine. Um, we've also got 85% general and 85% magic mitigation. Also, our morale, as you can see, is relatively good with this team. Even though we don't have Chow, we are still building a bunch of morale. There's the non-elemental magic I mentioned, and here's a bunch of the water magic. Now, that water damage would be crazy painful if we weren't absorbing it all, because look at our water resist. Even with Sylvie's buff, the party, and this is in their safe forms, by the way, we're like in the negatives in water, and, well, not Sylvie. Actually, Sylvie, too. Um, yeah, so that's why Water Absorb makes this no tank clear pretty smooth and not really a problem. As you saw, we, we were never at risk. That being said, now the Water Absorb has worn off. Okay, and but that's okay, because turn four is back to the same as turn one, and we survived turn one just fine. And now we have 85% magic mitigation on top of that. But the reason this is a big deal is now we need to stop hiding in the safe form. It is time for Wilk to shift to his DPS form, which is not nearly as bulky because we're not using spirit gear. So we're going to go ahead and use his Quake Blade to imperil the boss. And as you can see, he is um, in the negatives for water. But we can remove the imperils now. So Kresnik is going to potion, antioxidant, and supplement. And that will cure the imperils. So now Wilk's only at negative 20 water resist. And with the 85% mitigation, it's going to be totally fine. Um, on this turn, Kaito will do Flux for the big lightning imperil. We're not using a better lightning imperil. And then we're going to do, just for morale, deep and destabilizing. Chizuru is going to Tyvus' spirit. Runda can just put up cover again and hit the boss twice for a morale gain. And then Sylvie can use her shifted LB to um, buff us for next turn. So, okay, so this is back to the first turn of the rotation. A um, lot of AoE water and earth damage, uh, magic damage, but um, we've now got 85% mitigation. This should be very, very safe. Not to mention the morale is basically maxed out at this point. We didn't quite hit 200% for the burst turn, but that's okay. Um, this is good enough. We should be totally fine on morale here. Sometimes, depending on RNG, you might hit 200% morale. And there you see Wilk. You see Wilk in the, the DPS form is a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, taking some damage there, but we have 85% mitigation, it's fine. Keep in mind, also, Wilk has 55,000 HP, so that is a big help for his bulk. He's also got 2,600 spirit in his DPS form, like, you know, Wilk's chunky. Wilk's real chunky. Um, unfortunately, you know, as much as I like the damage of Olive, I'm just trying to show you the both sides of the coin. I showed you how much damage Olive can deal, and it's amazing. But imagine Olive with her no spirit and no shift form on this clear. Bad things would happen. Anyway, it is now time for the burst. So we're going to use Sylvie last on this turn. Um, we can go ahead and do the... Actually, that wasn't really important. We are, whatever. Do, do your morale buffs. It's fine. Anyway, so now Wilk is going to Vengeance for his big damage. We're going to go to the base form with Kaito and Triple Blade Storm. We're going to use Runda to triple blade storm as well. This is mostly for the chain count score. We're going to shift Chizuru and do our shift at LB. And that's it. That is all the damage we're going to do on the burst turn. Uh, Kresnik, by the way, can use his LB. That's going to auto-cast healing for later in the fight. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and chain these guys on the back row. Make sure Wilk is the is clicked first, because we didn't do Kaito's 90 defense break. So Wilk's gonna be clicked first. We're gonna chain his triple bolting with Kaito and Runda. A moment later, we're gonna send Chizuru, because Chizuru is the big damage here, and we want her to come in when the chain is that max possible modifier. Let's go ahead and send these guys. Wait just a moment, and then send Chizuru. And this should be 2.5, maybe more. And then Chizuru come in at the end, boom. That was a low roll on Chizuru. I saw 891 as the last hit, but that's okay. It's still gonna be fine, I think. We'll find out. Um, let's go ahead and go to the base form with Nail Sylvie as the last. The reason we're doing this last is we want this to refill LB Gauge for the party. So we're gonna Paladin's Offense and then refresh Petals and Vines for the resistance buffs. So we should have done 2.5 or better. This is not gonna be a super overkill clear. 2.7, there you go. So again, um, you know, without things like uh, Beach Olive and all that, the damage is definitely harder. But as you can see, it still is good. In a test run, I did 3 billion. So that was a low variant roll. Like I said, Chizuru's last hit was really low. That was a very bad variant roll. I've been talking for 20 minutes. I don't want to rerun the fight to show you a better variant roll. But, um, you know, this, this, this party goes as high as 3 billion. So if you're not quite in hit two, hit, hitting 2.5 because maybe your gear is a little bit weaker, maybe your EX levels are lower, um, just run it a few more times for variants. Uh, this party, as long as you're similar to my party, this can definitely damage cap. Um, but like I said, it, it is up to variants because, uh, you know, we um, I, I, I did 3 billion in the test run. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue the fight. So, as you see, the boss has buffs again, but we, again, don't have a magic tank. We could remove the buffs immediately with Kaito right now, but... More important is the incoming water damage without a tank. So we need to put up Absorb again. So we're going to go back to the base form. Well, we're already in the base form. We're going to stay in the base form with Kaito. And we're going to do this. We're going to do Torrential Force to get his modifiers boosted again. We're going to do Mana Few Words because he's going to stay in the DPS form. And this is going to give him a 90% damage reduction for himself. And then we're going to do Pure Liquid Infusion to Water Absorb. Uh, we're going to use Kresnik to just normal attack times four. We're going to use Runda to SLB. That should refill the um, the party's LB gauge with Runda L SLB and Kresnik quad attacking. Now we're going to use Sylvie to triple. We're, oh, we're going to go to the shift form. We're going to triple cast. Now we're going to use her Lightning Magnus to remove that water imbue. And then we're going to do double cheerful to get rid of four stacks of the boss's mirage. Now Wilk is going to Quake Blade. That's going to reapply the um, Axe and Peril and all that. It's also going to get rid of the last stack of mirage, which now allows us to use, use the morale skill for Resounding Will. Now Chizuru can get in some damage. Now considering the boss um, it still has the defense buff, it's going to be low damage. And thankfully Chizuru is a tag chainer. But she, she chipped in 12% damage, which is great. Okay, so here is some attacks. It's mostly a physical turn this round, but uh, there is going to be some magic, and it's going to be... Um, there's non-elemental. Uh, here's some water damage, but we're absorbing it. This is why I wanted Kaito's Magnus. Imagine all that damage if we didn't have the water healing in the middle of that. Um, it would have been really painful. But we had water absorbed. Totally fine. Now, let's go ahead and get rid of these bosses' buffs. Now we're going to shift Kaito and get rid of those buffs. So wait for all this to finish. A lot of auto-casting. Right. Oops. Something wrong on my turn chart. Give me one second. I... There it is. Okay, anyway. Kaito now to the shift form. Where now we're going to do... Both of his Magnus skills, that's going to extend that big imperil and all that and breaks. And then we're going to do Deep Submersion to just reapply um, the Katana imperil. So there we go. And the Mirage is all gone. Now, Runda can triple bolting. We can use Wilk's Unlocked Magnus. And, oh, Chizuru. Now Sylvie is going to triple. We're going to... I've got your back on Chizuru so she can LB yet again. And then just double cheerful to keep that morale nice and topped off, or use whatever you want. Okay, and then we're going to do this. Um, we can also use the morale buff here. 
And now this is probably going to kill the boss, depending on our variance, because now, once again, the boss has no buffs. So this is probably going to finish the boss, depending on variance. If it does, great. If not, it's okay. I've got turn 8 planned out for you. So let's go ahead and do this. Wait just a moment. Send Shizuru. And actually, I kind of hope it doesn't finish the boss off so we can show you the next turn. Even better. Even better. Again, we're lowing, we're rolling really bad variants this run. It's totally fine. Totally fine. We still have water absorption. Not a problem. Now, keep in mind, we are... Um, oh, never mind. Ignore that. Anyway, so just for absolute safety, we're going to AOE... We're not going to need this, but we're going to AOE re-raise, we're going to potion, and we're going to antioxidant. Just for the extreme safety, but we don't really need it. Oh, what we could have done is the defense, the spirit buff from the morale bar for even a bigger spirit buff, but you'll see. It's, it's going to be fine. So it's mostly water damage this turn. A little bit of non-elemental, but it's mostly water, and we were absorbing the magical water damage. And the non-elemental shouldn't kill us, and again, the water damage heals us mid-assault, so it's fine. A lot of attacks this turn. It's a very, very dangerous turn. If we didn't have that water absorb, that would definitely be a game over. Without a tank. If you had a tank, you're fine. But without a tank, yeah. You kind of want that water absorb. Anyway, um, so now we can go ahead and finish off the boss again. So to refill everyone's LB gauge yet again, what we're going to do is Kresnik is going to quad normal attack on this turn. Come on, Kresnik. We're going to quad normal. Sylvie will just triple clever this time to refill... LB gauge for the party. That fills everyone back up. And the reason for that is we're going to use Chizuru's base form. She is stuck in the base form. The base form LB is a huge modifier boost to things like um, chaining and specifically Kaito. So Kaito is now going to go to the base form and triple Torrential Blade Storm with the buffs from Chizuru. Wilk, um, his Magnuses are gone, so we're just going to Dragon to Reincarnation. And Runda will just jump in the chain to make it quicker. Um, let's go ahead and do the attack and magic buff. And keep in mind, also, this turn, Sylvie's second Thunder Magnus has reached 100%. So even if the boss is not at 6%, you're going to super overkill at this point. So here we go. Even though Chizuru is not really helping. And there it is. So there was our rank 1 clear without Chow. Okay, it wasn't a super overkill, but it was it was it was a kill. Whatever. So again, you know, if you have Chow and Sylvie together, these clears are really easy. Um, these clears where I am not using things like the best units in the game, uh, it's a little trickier. Not to mention we didn't have Esther, and her damage is quite nice. Um, so here's the breakdown. So Chizuru, obviously a big carry. Wilk, um, Wilk had a low variance roll. Uh, it's really unfortunate because I I did really better with him. Man, I hate axes. I really do. Um, <laughs> he's using an axe. Anyway, and then Kaito. You know, Kaito's damage is really unfortunate, but he is very important for that water absorb. But Chizuru carries that one. So there was the option for you guys. If you don't have Chow, let me go ahead and show you the gear. Also, we didn't use, you know, Esther and Olive. So here we go. Um, make sure that... Oh, never mind. That's not even important. Um... Yeah, yeah, okay. So the party order doesn't really matter, actually. As long as Silk... Yeah, because no one ever provokes anyway. Oh, never mind. It is important because of the gear. Yeah, on the the, the run to gear. Okay, so make sure Sylvie is in higher in the party order than Runda. Because Runda is using his special gear, which gives him passive provoke. Yeah, so Sylvie's got to be higher in the order than Runda. Because she's our passive provoker for the magic damage. Um, I gave her a source of counter just to help heal a little bit. Other than that, lots of bulk. I actually ignored resistance for the most part, so she has very low water resist, but the reason for that is because she only actually takes water damage like twice in the fight. All the rest of the turns, we're absorbing water. So what I ignored water resist. The main damage she takes is the single target non-elemental, so just give her high HP and high spirit, source of counter. I am dual wielding on her because we're using her card. I've, I've talked about it before, but that is a very big deal for the morale gain. That's a, if you dual wield and it applies twice, it's a ton of morale gain per turn. So even though it lowers her bulk, it's still totally fine. Um, we are dual wielding. And here's the shift form, you know, dual wield build and her own card. Shift form, exactly the same, both forms. And that was Sylvie. Kresnik, 
we start him in the shift form. Um, Obsidian Bracer, honestly, not important, uh, but whatever. We start him in the shift form. He's using another copy of Sylvie's card. If you don't have two copies, you know, on that, that's uh, just do what you can. You know, maybe you're still on the EX2 or something. Um, it's totally fine. You'll have less morale, obviously. But if you do have a second copy from EX3 Sylvie, make sure Kresnik is also dual wielding. Shift form is just using some bulk other than that. A little bit of water resist, um, but not much. And then base form is dual wielding with either Yeti style or Aurora Scar. That way you can quad attack. We need him to refill LB Gage on turns 6 and 8. So dual wielding quad attack Kresnik. And he does morale fill, healing, blah, blah, blah. And then Peril Removal. Base Form Chizuru. I didn't even check um, if Chizuru countered. I'm 99% sh I'm, I'm sure she did. I should, I should have gone over this in detail. The reason we didn't want to Water Absorb on turn 4 is because I wanted Chizuru to counter attack on turn 4. That puts up Omni Killer, and that is our only source of killer in this entire fight. Is a one turn Omni Killer from Chizuru counter attacking. Make sure she's using her TMR or STMR, or this won't work. Um, yeah, and that gives us 100% to Bird and Aqua Killer. That's the only killer we had. Uh, so, as much counter as we could, so a double Blizzard Orb and Looming Wrath, um, and then, you know, the, the Clash Gear for Morale Gain, and then Tyvis' Spirit. Shift Form is damage. So LB damage versus birds and aqua. I gave her the premier gear. She's uh, wearing the best of everything. Uh, the knight card and then maxed LB. 275 avian and 250 aqua. Killers are hard here, but there we go. Wilk in the base form is using a fire, thunder, or light weapon. We need him to seal the boss in the first few turns because we're not imbued yet. Um, so he does that. So he's using a, a Thunder Weapon in the base form. Other than that, give him a lot of bulk in the base form. Um, you know, just bulk, dual wield, etc. And he is using his own card. And again, dual wielding because the morale gain applies twice if he's dual wielding. Shift form is... I gave him the Axe because the Axe gives him... Um, it gives him Earth Resist. Honestly, I should have gone with the Fist. For less variance, because he rolled really bad that clear. So did she. That was a really low roll clear. It feels bad because <laughs> this team can do way higher. Um, but you know, I gave him axe. It does, it does give him earth resist. Also, I gave him the midsummer boater. This is for generic bulk. This gives him 50 water resist, and it also gives him guts and some HP. That's because um, he was taking some dangerous damage on turn four when I brought him into the shift form. Um, and just for the safety, I didn't want him to ever, ever die. So I gave him a zero DPS bulk helmet with water resist. Now, if you're, if you're, if you want to risk it, or if your Wilk is bulkier, you could um, swap this to like the, you know, a, a good helmet like that. You'll obviously get a lot more damage, but it'll be a little bit squishier. Um, anyway, so there was what I did, and here is his uh, shift form killers. And then his own card. And then he had Maxed Bird, 275 Aqua. Kaito in the base form is geared for damage. Now, I gave him his TMR in every form because that gives him permanent water absorbs. He, he absorbs water always. So yeah, so give him his TMR in the base form or both forms. Other than that, um, a little bit of bulk. Uh, but again, mostly chain damage. His damage is relatively low regardless. Chizuru's card for the killers. And he's got maxed bird, 150 aqua. And then in the shift form, we are starting in the shift form. And he's the carrier of uh, the Celestite Rod, the Treasured Memorial Ring. Some bulk in the shift form. Uh, there we go. This generic bulk. The shift form never does damage. And then there it is. And then Runda is not... He is passive provoking because of his arm and his shield. But um, he's, he's later in the party order. Never use his active provoke. All he does is mitigation and cover, um, physical cover. Just, you know, high defense, high HP. Here's the build we used. I gave him Calam Oh, we never used Calamity Border in this clear. And we also, we, also never, we also never used him to Extreme Nova Chain. Well, it didn't hurt, but there we go. And then I gave him the Power Cut card. And, yeah, I'll post a turn chart in the comments. So, again, this is not the... The biggest overkill clear for that you're in, you're going to be involving you know all the big boys at the same time, 
But for this one, you know, we didn't use Chow, we didn't use Esther, and we didn't use Olive. Or Roberta. Roberta is another one we did not use, which I've been using in multiple clears. So there it is. Hope it helps. Turn chart will be in the comments. See you next time.